The Ryzen 9 7950X 3D is touted by AMD to be the world's fastest gaming CPU, and an analysis of 16 reviews shows that it beats the 13900KS by 2.7% to take the gaming crown. So why is this CPU not universally recommended, and what did AMD get so wrong? Let's get into it. The Ryzen 9 7950X 3D is a CPU that I've been waiting for ever since AMD showed the prototype of the 59X 3D way back in May of 2021 at Computex. That CPU showed as having one 3D vCache CCD and one regular CCD. However, that hybrid prototype never made it to production. Instead, almost a year later in April of 2022, AMD released a single 3D vCache die CPU in the form of the 5800X 3D. That CPU was hailed as the best gaming CPU by reviewers, and it became the best gaming CPU you can get for the AM4 platform. Even to this day, it is in the top three best-selling CPUs on Amazon. This is due to the significant price drop where it can be had for just over $300, which is much lower than the $450 MSRP. Personally, I was excited for the 7950X 3D. I love the concept of this CPU, so I bought it before they sold out. They didn't sell out instantly. Some retailers had them for hours, others for a day or more. Since they were selling well, it seems scalpers came in and bought up the rest of them. Come on, Amazon and Newegg, why do you enable scalping on your very own website? But even a month later, they have not been restocked and they are sold out at MSRP prices. I understand that I am in that less than 1% of the CPU market that would love to have a productivity computer with 16 cores by day and then a fast CPU for gaming at night. Now, some will say that this is not the fastest productivity CPU. Technically, that is true since even the 7950X is faster. I know I own both CPUs, but it's about 5% faster. That is not a significant lead over the 7950X 3D. Without benchmarks, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in using either machine. Now, my initial experience with the 7950X 3D has been disbelief, anger, and disappointment. And if you watch my last video, that was due to the confounding results I was getting with this CPU. This was supposed to be a simple upgrade over my 7950X. As AMD said, You can install your new Ryzen 7000 series processor, update your chipset driver and BIOS, and you're good to go. My results were not good to go. I then spent hours upon hours researching what was wrong. And after seeing a couple of reviews, I knew that I was not alone. PC Per had some very weird results. So did BPS Customs and also UFD Tech. Some even questioned if this was just a scam. And now Linus came out with his review and his weird results. So it's not just me, but there are reviewers out there that seem to have good results. Digging deeper, you will find out that AMD supplied those reviewers with a 47 page reviewer's guide. Thankfully, Tech Power Up posted AMD's guide. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you, Tech Power Up. I went through the deck, I followed the installation steps, I ran the test cases, and long story short, after many hours, the system works as expected most of the time. Not all of the time, most of the time. And now when I ran Shadow the Benchmarks, I am able to get the expected performance. Here's the thing, unless you know what results to expect or are willing to test with each CCD turned off, I wonder how many users will ever know if their 7950X 3D is running their game on the right CCD. Either CCD is very fast, will the general buying public ever notice? Why is it not universally recommended? It is very inconsistent. Some people claim it's the best, others say it's a scam. And that is completely dependent on if you're able to set up, configure, run test cases, and verify your games are running on the right CCD. And if not, you get to spend your time not playing games, but becoming AMD's thread director. You get to schedule it via game bar or even download and use a third party program like Project Lasso. Why should the most expensive mainstream CPU require the customer to do all that work? This experience is like buying a project car. When I bought my Vega GPU, I knew I had to work on it to get the best performance. It was like getting a project car. Project cars can be fun, but I paid project car like money for that Vega GPU. It was heavily discounted. I've seen many people leave comments to say that if it's not working right, then it's the user's fault. It's not AMD's fault. What's that old saying? Shoot the messenger? Why does each and every user have to spend many hours to figure it out? 
Doesn't AMD have talented people at the company who know more about CPU architecture than the general buying public? Doesn't AMD know which games would run best on which CCD? AMD has had this hybrid CCD in a prototype since 2021. And since 2021, couldn't AMD have cataloged the top 500 games and developed a whitelist for Microsoft's game bar? And then just update it as new games come out. That would have led to a much better experience. This product is not ready because AMD did not invest the time and effort into the drivers and software to make this a great product. The driver and software implementation seems like it was a least minimum effort. It's clear AMD does not care if they disappoint their high-end paying customers. Even Steve at Hardware Unboxed doesn't mess with this CPU and thread scheduling. In a recent video, he benchmarked two GPUs and he used the Ryzen 9 7950X3D with the second CCD turned off. If anyone would know which games benefit from 3D vCache and which ones benefit from higher frequency, it would have to be Steve, who has more benchmarking hours than him. If you just shut off the fast CCD, it says one of two things, that no games benefit from the fast CCD and that they all should run on the slower frequency 3D vCache die, or, it says the benefit of getting that working properly is not worth the hassle of setting it up. Since we know some games do prefer faster cores and not cache, the first can't be true. Thus, even Steve does not want to take the time and go through the hassle of becoming AMD's thread director. At least if AMD is going to sell these CPUs for such a high price, they should at least give away a free t-shirt that says, I am the AMD thread director. By not having the thread scheduling feature fully developed, the results can be very inconsistent and the experience is more of that buying a project car rather than buying a top of the line flagship CPU. What was AMD thinking when they made this video in early February and then had to send out a 47 page reviewer guide two weeks later and then somehow at launch on February 28th, it was all just going to work and you would just be good to go. 47 pages should have been the red flag that says this thing is not ready. AMD should have delayed the 7950X3D and launched the 7800X3D instead. The 7800X3D would have been hailed as a great gaming CPU and the magical allure of 3D vCache for gamers would have continued. Instead, the magic and the brand of 3D vCache is tainted as AMD botches another launch. You only get one chance to make a good first impression and AMD threw that out the window by launching an unfinished product. Is this 7950X3D a scam? To call it a scam would be to call it a fraud. The hardware can deliver great results most of the time if you invest enough of your own time to figure it out. I wouldn't classify it as a scam. I would just call this a massive disappointment. AMD, another massive disappointment. AMD's reputation as a company should have improved with the release of a 3D vCache CPU. Instead, they took another step back. First, the lying about the 7900 XTX and an improvement of 50% performance per watt. And now the lying about how the 7950 X3D is. And you're good to go. Even when the 7800 X3D is released, the damage has already been done. The magic of 3D vCache will not hit the same highs like it did with the 5800 X3D and AMD did it to themselves. Is it a better chip? Since I have the ASUS Tough motherboard, it includes the SP rating. The SP or silicon prediction is ASUS's method to mathematically determine the silicon quality of the CPU based on its voltage versus frequency curve. With my 7950X, my SP rating was 114. And looking at the individual CCDs, with CCD0, it averaged 116, with the highest core at 122 and the second highest at 120. And with the other CCD, they're all between 113 and 115. With the 7950X3D, the SP rating was 109. Looking at the individual CCDs, the 3D vCache die averaged 97 and had its highest core at 100, with the rest between 93 and 98. This is as expected since the 3D vCache die does not clock as high of a frequency. The second CCD or non vCache die had its highest individual core at 125 and it averaged 122. That is 5% better than my best 7950X CCD which averaged 116. 
I don't know if the difference is just silicon lottery or if the X3D just comes with a better CCD. If you have an ASUS board and one of these CPUs, please leave a comment below with your ratings. Conclusion time. How well does it work? I think Gordon at PC World said it best in his video, I'll put a link in the description below, when he attempted to explain how the 7950X3D works in Windows, when he said, does actually kind of work. And then later in that video, he concluded, generally works pretty well. Not exactly a ringing endorsement of this CPU. And that perfectly sums up my experience. It kind of works and it generally works. It doesn't work properly all the time. And that's when you have to step in as AMD's thread director. This CPU is like a project car. It works kinda and generally. If you don't like to get into the BIOS or open up MSI Afterburner and then running tests and then monitor how it's working, then this CPU is not for you. Earlier when I said I was in that 1% of the market that wanted all those cores for work and a 3D Vcache CPU for gaming, with all the work involved, this CPU is for the 1% of enthusiasts in that 1%. If that's not you, don't get this CPU. I know that some are going to say in the comments that I am too hard in this CPU, as many of the reviewers were not that harsh. Well, I'll just say that maybe that's human nature. What do I mean? When somebody gives you something, are you ever that critical of that something in front of the person doing the giving? AMD gave those CPUs to the reviewers. They didn't pay any money. And the reviewers know AMD is watching. It's human nature to not be too critical. Heck, even since being kids, we're told to be grateful to the person giving you something, even if you don't like it. Billion dollar corporations know this full well and will take advantage of the reviewer's good nature anytime they think it will benefit them financially. I paid my own money for the CPU, so I don't have that feeling of being grateful to AMD. The 7950X3D is their most expensive CPU. There is no other consumer desktop CPU that costs more than this one. It is top of the line, at least until Zen 5 comes out. And I expect it to just work, just like my 7950X did, just like my 5950X did, and just like my 2950X that I bought before it. But this one didn't. Let me know in the comments below if you think corporations take advantage of people's good nature, and while you're there, leave a like, share this video, and consider subscribing. You'll be seeing more of the CPU in future videos, and I'll keep you posted if the drivers are getting better over time, like fine wine. I would hope they sort this out before the Zen 5-based 8950X3D is announced, because if they don't, they shouldn't even bother. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.